All right, I'm very excited to unveil to you my personal favorite tool in SculptGL and its counterpart, ZBrush, and that is the masking tool. So our masking tool is able to be located under our tool menu option, and then you can choose masking. And the key command for that would be to hold down the control key and your brush will be converted to a masking brush. What masking does is it allows us to protect certain areas of our mesh from being manipulated by other sculpting tools. So I am just going to show you all of these tool options. So first we have radius. That is the same as our radius tool for all of our other tools. So bigger radius, bigger mark, smaller radius, smaller mark. Intensity, we, for our purposes, are just going to keep at 100, so leave the intensity at 100. And then for hardness, that is going to affect whether or not we have a feathered edge on the outside of our mask. So I will draw one with a very low hardness, and you'll see how I have this nice feathery edge. That is going to slowly decrease the effectiveness of our mask as you move out from the center. And then with a very hard hardness, you have a hard edge along the outside of your mask and no tool will cross that final line. So I'm going to control Z to get rid of those. And I'm, I like to keep my hardness on the low side because generally I'm trying to gradate a little bit, but for certain things you will want your hardness up all the way if you want to protect a certain sculpted area. So how I personally like to move the, use this tool is to draw an outline of shapes that I want to sculpt. So I'm just going to draw an outline of a squiggle here. And you can use this tool to refine your drawing. So say I want to add a little bit of volume there. I want to add some volume there. You can also erase within your mask by holding down the Alt key. That is going to allow you to chip away at your mask. So now that I have the shape that I want to sculpt, I'm going to invert my mask and that is going to change the protected area from the shape that I just drew to the entire rest of my object. So I'm going to press control and click out in the gray space. Now my mask has been inverted and now I can specifically manipulate this area here that has remained this pinkish color. Now is when you're going to change tools. So I personally like to use the move tool with my masks. You can use any tool in conjunction with a mask though. So I'm gonna select my move tool and again, I have radius and intensity. I generally want to increase my radius so that it completely encompasses my masked area because I am using it to create volume so I'm going to take my move tool over to my masked area and I'm just going to pull it straight out of my mug. And you see now that has created a significant amount of volume that I previously did not have and it was a really fast and effective way to sculpt. And I can continue to play with that move tool and alter that in any way that I want. Every time you change your angle or viewpoint, you're going to be able to move in a different direction. So I find that tool to be extremely useful. So now that I've got my masked area sculpted into the exact position that I want, I can clear my mask by holding the control key, clicking and dragging out into the gray space. And that's going to get rid of my mask. So now I have this sculpted form that, if you look really closely, looks kind of jagged and rough along these edges. 
That's because I just severely stretched my polygons. And if you remember about topology, we have a set number of polygons and every time we add volume, we need to add accompanying polygons so that our object is nice and not tense. So I'm gonna go back to topology and I'm gonna choose remesh. And now the program has added polygons to make up for all of that volume that I just added. So now I'm gonna go in with my smooth tool, which also can be accessed by the key command shift. And I'm just gonna smooth out some of those transitions. You don't have to smooth out your sculpting that you've done with masks. If you like a hard edge or hard texture, that is absolutely fine to keep it that way. For this shape, I imagined it being pretty smooth and organic. So that's why I'm going back in and smoothing it out. Almost kind of looks like an ear. <laughs> so you can see that's a really fast and effective way to add volume to your forms. You can also use the masking tool to get really nice textural details. So I'm gonna go back to my masking and this time I'm gonna make my radius really small. So say I want to create something that looks like a feather. I'm going to create the stem of my feather here. And then I'll just go through and add individual little feather hairs here. Okay, and then I could use the exact same process where I'm going to invert my mask by control click out in the gray space. And this time I'm going to use the inflate tool just to show you another method. I personally would probably still use the move tool, but you can also use the inflate tool. And that is going to extrude all of that unmasked area. I can get rid of my mask, control click drag. And now I have what looks like a real feather. Again, I'm gonna to return to topology and remesh. You're gonna find yourself remeshing quite frequently throughout the sculpting process. And if I decided, hey, that's not really enough detail, you could go back in there with another supplementary mask and just keep adding right on top of your sculpture. So I can just go back in and add even more. This is the really fun part about working this way is that you can just keep adding layer on top of layer. Oh. I'll go back and inflate that again. So you see the inflate tool makes things kind of rounded like a balloon. That's why I typically don't really like to use it. I'm actually gonna undo that. Go back to my move tool here. Cool. And you can just keep on adding volume on top of volume and get really interesting results with our masking tool.